Hello and welcome to All About That Place. What I'd like to do is look at a person and what it tells you about their place. So we can create extensive detailed trees, putting all the people in our families. But when we need to look at where their places are, if we look at a map like I've got at the bottom, we start to wonder why they're there and what they did there and what was the cause of their movements. We can also do our reports, of course, too. And if we look at the story, which is after all what captures our imaginations and interests people, then this article from a newspaper is ideal because it tells us about a honeymoon. So we know where they start, where they go to, and we can conjecture the journey, as you can see there, and their transport, all about connecting places. So our basic documents put together our skeleton tree. And if we fully research all those about the person, we can see there's 16 items to discover. Maybe they all take place in the same place, which they do mainly for the person I'm focusing on, but not absolutely. So 20, 37 items have I recorded for this person. You can see the dates 1841 to 1923, which very nicely captures all the censuses that we've got available. But I haven't recorded every single item, but most of them do take place in one place. So how many sources are there? Well, endlessly. Depends whether we can find people in them and um, and whether they actually were ever in them. But there are things I haven't chosen to record or got round to or selected, whichever way you want to look at it, um, such as some of the memorabilia I've got, land and property, lots of local history, and all the voting. And I know there's also other things to look at that I haven't got to either because I haven't got round to it or most likely because they're in an archive. I haven't just had that opportunity. So just have a look at our death index. And one of the things we need to look consider for our place description is the registration district. Now, this place um, has been in three different titled registration districts. Of course, it's not actually moved. Uh, and um, so we've got a, a GRO index, a parish death uh, burial and a newspaper. And it tells us at the bottom here that this person was uh, held every position open to a layman in conjunction with the parish church and also a political organisation. So that means um, those people in that place would know him very well. And sometimes it's about that atmosphere, isn't it? Not just who he knows, but who knows him or her, of course. So thinking about a death certificate this time um, and the doctor. So what standard of medical care are we as is available to our residents? You can see from this one at the bottom, these records are from the Wellcome Trust on Ancestry. It tells me that this man's come from London, trained, um, but in the, he's the medical officer of health. He is an inspector of the schools for the borough. Uh, he does um, public vaccinations, the poor law union he's involved with, a fever hospital, the police in the county and um, for the post office and also for an insurance company uh, and another independent society. All sorts of avenues to research as background to where this person lives. If we look at the 1921 census, we've automatically got some demographics available to us, kindly provided by Find My Past. The comparison between England and Wales and the local area in ages, occupations and also surnames. But I also wanted to just pop in here signatures, which is one of my favourite things. Um, this person is quite old. We know from his little obituary announcement, his eyesight failing. And you can see the different signature in 1921 to when he was a church warden for his place. Of course, enumerators routes, they're great to look at. And 
comparing those from the National Library of Scotland with a Google map today, we can see it's still quite a lot of green space around the area. And, and the route is on, found on most of the commercial sites, but we do sometimes need to have a look for it. It doesn't always pop up. And of course, you can do that in more than one year. If we look at the person's census records, again, only one year is this person not in their place. And it shows a, 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 a information on transport, on uh, movement, possibly migration, but we can get the feeling of the industry in the area. So we've got very much a textile um, basis here where the people are living. And even the marriage throws up different clues and different places to research. Um, for, and I've shown you it from the GRO, from the genealogist. But again, it's that registration district I want to flag up. And how, the, although it never moves, it does by title. And the UK BMD is brilliant for showing those changes. So your little place may be captioned differently. Newspapers, what would we do without the digital newspapers? British Newspaper Archive. Find my past mirroring those much better search engine these days. Welsh newspapers. And do search by place in the Gazette. You might be surprised. Speed limits is a fun thing. And the Times, that's available too, on um, usually through your library cards. And in this case, um, I've got found a, a, a Hayrick incident in this person's garden. But also it's telling us that the West Riding magistrates are involved in this area. And this lad, um, I wonder what happens to him. Uh, and they also uh, you hire a local fire engine so that's another opportunity for what's going on here. As I've said, newspapers, don't forget to have a look around on the page or maybe the next couple of pages. A couple of times I've nearly missed having a description of a wedding, not just the announcement. And here in the village, as you see, um, it talks about the pubs. So why don't you while this may not mention your ancestors or even mine, it is telling us what's going on and that school children in this area are going to have a feast, a party in celebration of this marriage. So we can get that atmosphere. And look then, of course, we can look up the pub. Is it still there? So one of them is the cross keys, as you can see from Google, and the other one, and it was easy to find on a map, the other one not so. Can't tell where it was at the moment, but we wanted to point out here, you've got the mention of a wapentake for your research. That's because we're in the north of England. If it was in the south, we'd be looking for hundreds. And this is the pub that I can't find where it was, but we have the sureties uh, and the names of the innkeepers. Reminder. Check the top of your censuses. These are giving you clues. So township records, where are they? We've got municipal boroughs, parliamentary boroughs, urban sanitary districts, and of course, your church. But this is described as Lane End. If you tried to find that today, people wouldn't know where it is, but your local history of the place will enlighten you. A birth, baptism very much fo focusing on a hamlet, perhaps, enabling you to focus on a smaller area and the occupations once more, split off families because they have different occupations, even if we've got cousins, all with the same names, of course. And just pointing out one rather interesting aspect here of the birth certificate for this person, where the registrar mistyped the date. So depending which one, and I obviously ordered two, by accident, um, we have a different year of registration. How could we miss out trade directories? And so how do our people get mentioned in there? Sometimes um, as occupations, as my family here that I'm looking into, and of course the description of the area. So we have it this place as a parish, as a wapentake, as an honour. Now an honour is a group of manners 
So we need to look into manorial documents too. And we've got some of the churches mentioned. Which denominations do our people belong to? Uh, what were they like? Are they still there? Etc. And antiquarians, local history, this lovely piece saying that this lady um, got a polished mallet and a silver trowel for a foundation stone. And it, once again, we're seeing the local network, the community, the people that will have been at church, at Sunday school, uh, at other uh, bazaars, perhaps. And we've mentioned the parish chess briefly, the church warden, there's his signature, but he also was a justice of the peace. And we get the dates from the genealogist at the bottom. And he was on a foundation stone. So this is local to me. It was easy enough to find. But um, you might have to look into church records, parish chess, if it has survived. Oral history. Uh, many uh, organisations, libraries, etc. have done oral histories. And this was another piece of my jigsaw, rather an exciting one for the Whitsuntide events. And this was a recording by the Civic Society, also an organisation. I try and remind people they're interested in the built environment, past, present and future. That's a slightly different take to a family and even a local history society. I know this guy was on the school board and it's represented by various other denominations. Uh, so that shows the change in education at this time. And for some areas we have deeds that are very prolific, uh, as you can see on screen. For other areas, it's probably a troll of an online catalog or even maybe an inquiry to an archive and or a researcher. I mentioned electoral rolls not having been recorded for this person because they're so prolific. Oh, are they going to tell me lots different? But I, I do try and check because you never know. Sometimes you can find when somebody comes in. So great grandparents died in a property I'm interested in. From looking at the electoral registers, I know when they moved in in their later years before they... Uh, died. And the 1910 Valuation Office survey is superb for place, house history, to some extent people, but also tenants. You don't always get records that are showing as tenants and rentals. Um, so this is what this is doing. Um, a couple of different properties here, a small one, smaller one, uh, and a large one, and you can see the description. You've got the owner, as I've said, the occupier. These are gradually coming on the genealogist, but your local archive should be able to help you too, or the National Archives, perhaps. Probate, business records, that's something else to discover. The local gas company listed my person as being one of the second largest shareholder. But it also showed me that there were outside investors into the gas company. Would you have thought to look if he was your person, was out of county? Not always easy. This is not online. And probate records, you can do a certain excellent amount of work with probate calendars. But also the, if there's inventories, the tools and the activities in the areas. And of course, military, the war lots of things to find maybe people on the local war memorial in this case nephews were, were lost uh, and then the church records and diaries photographs and medal cards and tithe and enclosure very much a place orientated record sets but also telling about your person if you're lucky enough that they own property um on the tithe you get lots and lots of field numbers to interpret um, enclosure less so. Uh, again, lots coming online, uh, one of the big things for the genealogist, but don't forget to look at local archives too. And so we're moving from a skeleton to a story. Lots and lots of records and sources to look at. Think about these things in chronological framework. What records are available? for what time, when, especially when we're focusing, as I am, on a person, first of all, and then spreading them out. 
And I wonder what my person would think if he knew that his place, Pudsey, became internationally, can I say that? Nearly so, certainly nationally renowned for a teddy bear with one eye. And that, of course, goes back to the family history of the BBC's graphic designer. You really never know what you're going to find about your place. Do enjoy your research. Thanks for listening.